It kind of looks like a hot one in the shop today. And that means it can be flat out miserable in a blacksmith shop when it gets to be this hot. As the mercury climbs anywhere above 70 or 80 degrees outside and you're working around a fire inside, you need to really think about it and you need to perhaps do some things a little bit differently. Now six months ago we talked about how to deal with the cold. We got to sit in front of a wood stove and have a little heater and wear our long underwear and put on flannel shirts and all sorts of nice comfy cozy things that made dealing with the cold a little bit better. None of that works when you're dealing with the heat and it's a lot harder sometimes to deal with the heat than it is with the cold. It's a lot easier to add clothes once you're down to about this I'm not going to get any less dressed to work in the blacksmith shop than I am now. Now I have seen some people work in shorts and with bare feet, but I'm not the one that's going to do that and I don't think that's a good idea in the blacksmith shop because you still got to stay safe and you still got to avoid getting burned. So what are some strategies for staying a little bit cooler or maybe just not overheating in the blacksmith shop? Well there's a lot of things that you simply can't change if you're doing a specific project you still need to do that project the way you always would which means if it requires a hot fire and forging you're still going to have to have a hot fire and forging so you can't really suddenly start working your iron cold you can't start not having a forge unless you have a whole lot of cold work lined up now if you do repose which is sheet metal work that is typically done cold Saving that for the summer might be a good idea. Do your big forge welding projects in the winter. Do your repose work or your lighter work in the summer. Personally, I don't have the luxury of picking work seasonally. Whatever the customer's order is whatever I need to do, so it, it really doesn't matter. If what I have to do today is a lot of forge welding, i got to run that forge all the way up, high heat, huge flame front coming out of it, the dragon's breath, all of that stuff makes it outright miserable to work. So what do I do? First I try to modify when I work. If I get up to the shop a little bit earlier in the morning, maybe even while it's still dark, although I don't do that often because I just don't get up that early, but I should, and get in when the shop is still cool. It still gets down below 60 here at night, so if I get into the shop and do my forge welding between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m., and then shut the forge down for the rest of the day and do cold work the rest of the day, it's way more bearable than it is to forge weld in the afternoon. Right now it's about 2 o'clock and it's probably the hottest day of the year so far and it will get a little bit hotter here. And it's not that hot outside but I was running the forge in here this morning and it simply hasn't cooled off and I've got four doors open right now and I've got open rafter tails that actually vent the heat very well and keep the shop from getting too overheated. If I ever insulate this place it could be even more miserable in the summer and I'll have to take other steps. But just changing when you work. There's a reason people in southern climates or equatorial zones practice the art of the siesta. That's because it is foolish to be out in the noonday sun. It is what is it they say? Only madmen and Englishmen go out in the noonday sun? Well, that kind of describes blacksmiths. We may not all have English heritage, but some people would call us mad for working around a fire when it's 100 degrees outside. So not working at the hottest part of the day might be one of the best solutions to dealing with the heat. Work in the morning. Take the afternoon off. If you had to get up early to come to the shop, go, go back in and take a nap or stay inside where it's cool. I just spent the last three hours doing some of my bookkeeping work and catching up on the computer stuff I need to do in the house where it's cooler instead of being in the shop during the absolute hottest part of the day. Now that it's starting to cool off just a little bit and there's a slight amount of cloud cover it's not so bad and I probably won't do a lot of hot work. I'll do a little bit this afternoon but it'll be at lower temperatures and I can run the gas forge set a little bit lower and I don't have to worry about it so much. But how else can we deal with extremes in heat? Like I say, we talked about extremes in cold. Extremes in heat are tougher to deal with. I have the doors open. I've got this room back here still isn't finished. It's wide open. Lots of air comes in there. Snow comes in there in the winter. 
But right now, it's really nice that it's so well ventilated. I've got the door over here open. I've got both doors over in this corner of the shop open. And the eaves are all open, so air does move around the shop a little bit better. And if there's any breeze outside, that helps. I also have a fan. This isn't the biggest or most aggressive fan in the world, but it's not bad. And because it's on a stand, it gets it up to where it can actually blow across where I'm working. And I have it blowing across me while I'm working at the anvil. I don't really want it blowing across the anvil because that cools your work down. It means you've got to work a little longer and a little harder. And in the heat, you don't want to be inefficient if you don't have to be. So I, the fan kind of hits me right, right through here. And it, it does help considerably to have the fan in here. Somebody gave me this big rooftop exhaust fan. And I'm going to mount this somewhere in the roof of the shop if I ever have time to do it. And that should help take more of the heat out. So between a fan blowing across you and one carrying the heat up, I think uh, we might get a lot of heat, more heat out of the shop and it might stay a lot nicer in there. But we'll see. I haven't had time to even figure out where I want to mount that yet. Now I can't imagine trying to actually air condition a blacksmith shop. It would probably be nice if you could do it, but as much heat is generated in the shop when you're working, you would be running an air conditioning system awfully hard and it would get kind of expensive to run that. And I think that a lot of places it just would be prohibitive. But I suppose if you have the money you could do that. On the other hand, if you live in a dry climate like we do, a swamp cooler or an evaporative cooler can sometimes be very helpful. I have not tried to put one on the building, one that's permanently mounted. Uh, for one thing, I don't have one. Uh, the other thing is I don't have a source of water in the shop. I have to carry water in a container of some sort up from the house if I want water in the shop or catch rainwater on the rare occasion that we get rain anymore. So a swamp cooler or an evaporative cooler hasn't really been high on my list. I would like to have one and I have considered buying one of these freestanding things that are made for workshops and warehouses and things like that that could be moved and you point it directly at you like you do the fan that I showed you except then it has some water and they have a reservoir on them that you can fill so I could bring a bucket of water up and pour it in the reservoir and I wouldn't have to have a permanently plumbed cooler. Problem with that is they take up floor space, more floor space even than the fan does and I'm just not sure if I've got a place to put something like that. But I'm seriously thinking about it because I get more tired of the heat every year and as I work longer hours in the shop with the forge going, the heat gets worse every year. So I would really not mind having something that actually cooled the air. Even if it was something you just had to go sit in front of for five minutes every half hour just to cool off a little bit. And that's another strategy for dealing with the heat. Take longer breaks. Take more breaks. Don't work until you are ready to drop take a break before you get to that point and keep yourself from getting sick, keep yourself from having a heat problem. Heat can really be damaging and it can sneak up on you and it can devastate you. So if you don't want to be sick for the next few days, don't get to that point. So taking a break every half hour and just going and sitting in the shade or outside the shop in a breeze or something like that might be the thing to do. Your trusty red bandana soaked in water and wrapped around your neck, that can dissipate a lot of heat. They actually make something with little beads that swell up. I'm not sure what kind of a fiber it is, but it's some sponge-like stuff that absorbs water. And you can soak it in water, wrap it around your neck, and it helps cool you off like a little personal evaporative cooler most of the day. And you can just soak it in water overnight, put it back on the next day. And that does help. I have gotten out of the habit of wearing one, but I might go try to figure out where I left mine because I do have one somewhere. Now ultimately, one of your best defenses against getting sick from the heat and being able to cope is drink lots of fluids. Water especially. You'll notice in the background, even in the winter when I'm working in the shop, you'll see various containers sitting around. Most of these just have water in them. and you need to drink a lot of water. I will sometimes on a hot day if I am working hard go through about a gallon of water in the morning and another gallon in the afternoon and that does not include what I drink when I get up in the morning. 
what I drink at lunchtime, and what I drink in the evening. So I can drink a lot of water during a day. And yes, I drink a fair amount of coffee too. That's an old fire station habit. But coffee doesn't do you much good for hydrating. If you're drinking coffee, you probably actually need extra water to kind of make up for the fact that coffee causes you to expel water more so than retain water. So drinking caffeinated beverages, coffee, tea, sodas, probably not the best idea in the heat. You need the water. Something you can drink are the sports drinks. Not, not energy drinks that are, have extra caffeine in them, but the sports drinks that have some electrolytes and things like that in them that help replenish some of what you're losing throughout the day. These aren't the healthiest things in the world. They're loaded with sugar. Sugar does give me some extra energy and I feel like I can work a little harder, a little more throughout the day. But I know it's not the best thing for you, so I try not to drink too many of these. Pretty much I drink water in the morning. In the afternoon, I'll probably drink two or three of these stainless bottles of water. Or I, when I remember to fill it, I fill up this big jug and just keep it in the shop and it lasts me a few days. And then maybe one bottle of the, the sports drink throughout the afternoon. And it does help, but again, it may not be the best thing for you. Water's always good for you. Now, what are some of the things that you are concerned about in the heat? Now, you can tell you're getting more tired, more exhausted, wear out faster, maybe you get little heat rashes, whatever. But there are more serious things that you should be worrying about. Things like heat cramps, and you'll know it if you start getting cramps in your big muscles and your legs and your arms. That's a sign that you're probably overdoing it. You've been in the heat too long. You haven't been drinking enough water. You're not getting enough electrolytes. Time to go in the house and take care of that. Just be done for the day at that point. Heat exhaustion can be a little bit worse. You start to break out in a cold sweat because your body is trying desperately to cool off and it is taking all the moisture you have and converting it to sweat and hoping that you will cool down faster and you're going to get nauseous, you're going to really feel even more tired, you may still have the cramps. That's really a time that you absolutely have to get out. You're just right on the verge at that point of having a serious medical emergency. So if you get to that point that you're just sweating so profusely and feeling miserable, I don't care what you're in the middle of, I don't care if you promise somebody it would be done tonight, you're done for the day. Go inside, cool off, Go lay in a bathtub of cold water if you need to. Whatever it takes to cool down, drink lots, maybe even give your doctor a call. That's uh, starting to get serious. If you don't take care of it, it goes on to heat stroke. Heat stroke is an even bigger problem. You can't sweat anymore. You're hot, you're dry, it's starting to affect your brain, you can't think properly, you may not be able to stand up, you may pass out. Passing out in the blacksmith shop because of heat means you're liable to land on a piece of equipment that's going to cause other injury, head injuries, or who knows what, or a serious burn. If you land in your forge because you passed out, it's going to ruin your life. So don't let it get to that point. Now, this isn't a first aid lecture. I don't feel like I'm the one to give you first aid advice. So take a first aid class or talk to your doctor about heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke or at least buy a book that describes it better than I can. I'm just giving you the very basics, but heat injuries can be very serious. It's something to take seriously and don't let yourself get to that point. Once you get to that point, it may be days before you feel normal to get back in the shop. You're working that extra 10 minutes or an hour is not going to help you out if you have to take the next week out of the shop. So I know that isn't uh, as cut and dried, so to speak, as what we can do in the winter to stay warm because really it is much more difficult to stay cool in the summer than it is to stay warm in the winter. By the way, the saying I couldn't remember earlier, I'm pretty sure is only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the noonday sun. And by Englishmen, I think they mean people from cultures who let the clock dictate how they live their lives and not the environment. So live with the environment a little bit. If the day says it's too hot to work, maybe that's when you take your time off and you wait till the evening and then you go back to work and you work. You switch your 
your relaxation hours and your work hours and do it in the opposite order as you might normally do it. Still the same number of hours in a day. You can still get the same amount of work done. But working into the evening might be way more pleasant in the shop. To sum it up a little bit, try to work in the cooler parts of the day and stay inside in a cooler environment when it's the hottest part of the day in the shop. Drink lots of fluids and take lots of breaks and pay attention to what your body's telling you. And even though it might be miserable, you should be able to survive the summer working in a blacksmith shop. So that's all I've got on dealing with the heat this summer. And of course, if you're in the southern hemisphere right now, you can go watch the older video on how to deal with the cold because that's the one that might interest you. In the meantime, if it's cool enough, head on out to the shop and make something. If it's hot, that's a good time to stay inside and watch YouTube videos about blacksmithing. Share those videos with your friends. Give them a thumbs up if you can. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. But in any case, I hope you do have a cool enough time in your day to get out to the shop, make something, enjoy your time in the shop, but do stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.